Yeah, hello from Madrid uh, to Berlin. Uh, a very warm welcome to Mrs. Sabine Leuthauser Schnarrenberger, um, who is not just not just our vice president, vice president of the Friedrich Naumann Foundation, but also a two-time former minister of justice of the Federal Republic of Germany, long-time member of the German Parliament, and a fierce defender of human rights. She's really well known all over the country and outside Germany for defending human rights. And she's one of your um, yeah, core uh, issues, one of your motivations to pin politics. Thank you so much for being with us today. Yes, thank you so much for organizing this EU MENA conference and hello to Madrid. And thank you so much for your kind words. Yes, I'm until today very much engaged in human rights policy and I think there is a lot of things to do in the migration policy and the right of ref refugees are so important that it is very good that you organized this uh, meeting and this talk. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, let's just uh, uh, jump into it. And um, just before the corona pandemic started, uh, you were in fact uh, visiting several refugee camps on the Greek island of Lesbos to see for yourself what is going on there. Uh, what can you tell us about your first-hand experiences with migration there? Oh yes, uh, I was devastated. The situation mm -hmm. um, of asylum seekers and they are asylum seekers living um, within the European Union is horrible. Uh, in the main camp um, on Lesbos, the Camp Moria, uh, there are now around 16,000 uh, people living. They are mm -hmm. living in tiny holes in the ground. Uh, they're only, they have plastic tapes as roofs. Uh, they have to crawl into it. They are living a lot of unaccompanied children. And this camp has only places for 3,000 refugees, mm -hmm. not for now around about 16,000. And I think these young people, the children, they are losing, yes, their youth there. They have no hope, they have no perspectives. So I think um, uh, it's necessary to act, to support also the uh, Greek uh, government. Uh, and yes, I know, I had a lot of meetings with NGOs, with representatives uh, all around the world. And uh, there, uh, there are a lot of people, I think, perhaps 50% of them, I don't know it. They will mm -hmm. not grant asylum because they are coming from their original uh, countries where they are not uh, victims of um, uh, political uh, um, uh, affronts. So, mm -hmm. um, therefore, we need uh, uh, strong procedures. Now, asylum seekers are staying in these camps over three years without Incredible. any asylum process. So you need uh, another uh, kind of procedure there. Um, they need support and it is really necessary that these uh, refugees are not staying uh, their lives there. They have uh, uh, to resettle to uh, Greek, to Greece or into other countries, but I mm -hmm. think this situation is really horrible. And uh, my impressions now and my motivation now is uh, to try to help, also to try to help that these young people have access to school, to education, to kindergartens, to something like that, because mm -hmm. now nothing is existing. Yes, these are really horrible images from a yes. place with this inside Europe, inside the European yes. Union. This is incredible. Yes. I totally um, agree. This is a, a devastating report. What, what could and what can, what should and what can the European Union do about this? I mean, we cannot leave Greece alone with that. Yes. What, 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 what does um, the EU uh, need to do now yes. from your perspective? From my perspective, yes. There is so much to do and the EU can help. 
And I think uh, first, uh, the European Union um, um, can combat uh, human trafficking uh, more efficiently than at this time. The European uh, Commission advocates for the reintroduction of official ship missions to combat smugglers and rescue uh, refugees. And I think this is really important. Since uh, the Operation Sophia was suspended last summer 2019, no EU member state has been involved in, rescue, in res rescuing uh, refugees. And the entire burden is borne by private organizations. I also um, have met some of them here in Germany, uh, see what and so on. And uh, they uh, are doing, yes, they are defending the human rights when they try to rescue people there, refugees there, but mm. they are attacked. Uh, they uh, sometimes were arrested, the representatives of these private organizations, and prosecuted and uh, their vessels um, um, have been seized. So it's a really a difficult situation for them. And therefore, um, the EU has to implement again an official um, ship mission to rescue uh, the people, uh, the refugees, and to combat uh, the smugglers. I think that's the first thing you uh, mm -hmm. can do now. Um, but this is also yes, a help, um, a short-term help, not uh, for the future. So in the long run, European Union member states need to compromise on a joint European policy on migration and asylum. And this is really difficult. We all know mm. that since 2015, they are negotiating. Now there is a new proposal from the European Commission uh, we have mm. to uh, discuss, and perhaps it might work. Uh, yeah. The main point is burden sharing. Burden sharing means that member states um, that want to do um, so should accept refugees as mm -hmm. Germany, as Sweden, as France and some other member states. Um, others who don't want to accept uh, refugees, mm -hmm. as we know, Hungary, Poland and so on, uh, must provide health care other kind of uh, support, financial resources, and other different things. In my view, this is pragmatic and it could work. Uh, not every state would have to host refugees, we know, but no mm -hmm. state can completely refuse to participate. I think this is the main point. Pragmatism and solidarity among member states are needed, and this, uh, and yes, and this made the European Union so successful in the past. And this could be, yes, a solution for the refugee crisis we have until today. And uh, overall, we have uh, to drive forward uh, the European asylum system, the Dublin regulations. Um, mm -hmm. And yes, I think we need a legal basis to hold accountable those member states which refuse to cooperate. Perhaps then um, they, uh, the financial transfers have to be cut, something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the, these discussions are on the floor and I hope that the European Union under the German um, representationship will be um, uh, more successful than in the past and in the last years. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, indeed. Um, talking about the EU Commission, I mean, it's... it's uh, denominated itself as the geostrategic uh, strategic uh, commission and um, yeah. I sometimes believe there's a lack of a strategic foreign policy 
uh, discourse, not just in Germany, but as, uh, in Europe as such. And uh, actually, when people talk about migrants, for instance, from Sub-Saharan Africa in Europe, they, they sometimes uh, refer to them as some sort of natural phenomenon, um, mm -hmm. when in fact Europe has a responsibility for some of the push factors of migration in many countries of origin, doesn't it? Um, as it's an uh, interesting question, I think <laughs> an important um, point, but I do not agree with the post-colonial uh, discourse in the sense that every bad and every crisis <laughs> would origin in colonization and the bad influence of the West. Uh, I think that is a dangerous narrative um, for a couple of reasons. On um, the one hand, it relieves leaders of today from any responsibility for bad governance uh, in the countries of origin. Corruption, armed conflicts, human rights abuses are legitimized that way. On the other hand, uh, the argument insinuates that no progress um, has been achieved at all. The opposite, I think, is true. Many African countries were growing at remarkable rates before COVID-19. Mm. Yes, that's right, before COVID-19, socially and econom economically. The young, successful uh, Africa deserves uh, recognition. So I said this now, uh, but you are right. The lack of a strategic discourse in Europe and also in Germany in particular is really shocking. It is almost as if, you know, climate change or unfair European uh, trade regulations or a lack of geostrategic relevance on the European side did not even exist. Think of Syria. Putin acts as he wishes. Uh, he doesn't take Europe seriously at all. And as we know from the last weekend, it is a great problem to continue the UN humanitarian um, aid for the three million Syrian people encircled in the North Territory of Syria and Russia mm. and China blocked uh, over days the UN resolution. Now we have a first step, but uh, it isn't uh, really enough. So I think, um, yes, uh, we have the lack of a geostrategic uh, discourse. Also, um, if you see uh, the big issue of all the young people beside refugee problems, the climate change. Um, mm. Highly developed uh, industrialized nations share a, sp uh, a special responsibility for the effects of global warming um, in the developing world. Yes, because we all have the fruits of this development and mm -hmm. people living in Africa in other underdeveloped or low developed countries, they have the right also to participate in this uh, process. So um, mm -hmm. experts agree that climate change will have a huge impact on human settlement and migration. And yes, um, it's really important to uh, address this because there are uh, the um, climate change denier. And these are always the populists from the right-wing parties in Germany, all over the European Union and mm. outside uh, Europe. And so I think, uh, yes, we also need their regarding climate change, fair um, trade um, uh, conditions, there we need a joint European Union uh, program strategy. And we have to discuss this beside all the other problems. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for, for your insights. Uh, uh, this has been really interesting. And uh, also thank you so much for accompanying us, not, not just today, but uh, every day 
Every um, day, yes. Every day. I'm well aware of what you are doing and I'm <laughs> very much impressed and proud to be part, um, yes, of uh, the uh, foundation and also of what MENA is doing here together with Madrid with your uh, office there. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it and have a wonderful day. Um, see you very soon. Thank you and uh, well, be very successful with your work. Thank you so much.